It was March of 2010 when a 54-inch water main break flooded homes in Hialeah and left a massive sinkhole in the middle of a major artery. This pipeline failure highlighted to Miami-Dade Water and Sewer Department that it must assess and prioritize the work needed for its aging infrastructure. That's where we at Pure Technologies came in and partnered with WASD to make sure that scenes like these don't happen. I'm Louis Aguirre. I'm the chief of water distribution. Approximately at 1 o'clock in the morning, we receive an emergency phone call that the intersection of West 4th Avenue and 49th Place uh, was completely destroyed. Uh, when we got here, we uh, investigated what the problem was. It appears that a 54-inch water main that, that takes the portable water to the north, uh, north of the county uh, blew up, was broken, and we are in the process of assessing la, uh, the, uh, the, what well, the problem is, and we are going to get a private company that is going to come in and help us uh, make the repair. We expect that the repairs will probably take approximately 72 hours. It may take a little bit longer to open up the intersection because we have to do a restoration according to DOT standards. And the approximate size of the sinkhole is? Uh, about 40 feet by 40 feet. We're one of the 10 largest water and sewer utilities in the country, depending on how you want to rank us. We serve about 2.5 million people. Uh, we have three regional water treatment facilities and about a half dozen smaller satellite facilities down in the south part of the county. But there's uh, the three large facilities collectively treat and distribute over 300 million gallons a day of water. So uh, we've got about something over 5,000 miles of, of pipe that uh, we have to worry about and keep maintained and, and keep it from leaking as much as possible and more and more every day because of the impetus on water conservation. You know, the first place to start is leaks. But we as provider of water for our customers are supposed to make sure that infrastructure is going to work whenever we need it. So doing this inspection is just making sure that we'll be able to provide the water to our customers any time of the day. When you open that faucet, that water is coming out. Well, we're here in Miami-Dade County. Uh, we're inspecting using Pipe Diver, a 96-inch diameter raw water transmission main. Uh, it's a pipeline that runs a little over eight miles in length and uh, supplies a little over a third of the county with uh, treated water. Pure Technologies will be able to tell them what exactly uh, is the condition of their pipeline and if they have to repair anything immediately or if they can, if they can wait and make those repairs at a later date. Pipe Diver is a free swimming tool that consists of a navigation aid, battery module, tracking module, and sensor module. The system is neutrally buoyant and has flexible fins that are used to center the tool within the pipe and provide propulsion. The system is designed for large diameter main inspections and is capable of inspecting long distances by simply adding battery modules. As the pipe diver tool enters the transmission main, it uses buoyancy and its fins to quickly stabilize itself in the center of the pipe. The tool travels at virtually the same speed as the flow velocity in the pipeline. Pipe diver sends and receives signals and functions much in the same way as a radio transmitter. The signals are amplified within the pipe and signal distortions pinpoint weak areas within the line. With its flexible design, Pipe Diver can travel through a variety of bends in the pipeline, including 45 and 90 degree. The tool can also navigate through butterfly valves, which must remain open during inspections. During the inspection, Pipe Diver movement is tracked from above ground via manned or predetermined checkpoints. For short distances, field crews can be used to track progress. The versatile tool can also be inserted into the pipeline via a chamber or open channel, and extracted from a reservoir, depending on the local site conditions. To get ready for this assessment, uh, we have uh, several weeks of preparation in advance. About approximately, depending on the, the miles of pipe that we are inspecting, we have uh, anywhere from three to four weeks of preparation. Uh, what we have to do is we have to look at all the as built information, we have to identify all the interconnects to the existing line that we will be uh, uh, inspecting, identify their location, their proper function. Hydraulic modeling helps in this kind of operation to predict velocities so that uh, we know how long will it take to, for the operation like this to, and what time we need to retrieve the diver. The data from inspection like this helps us in verifying the models because we get actual velocities in this system under certain conditions. So that validates the model and our future predictions. Models also prevent us from 
closing lines which would adversely affect population as a whole. With a test like this, you basically kill two birds with one stone. You measure the condition of the pipe and also get the data for the model. Once the inspection has been completed, data is downloaded from the tool and interpreted by an experienced analyst to pinpoint and quantify locations of pipeline distress. It'll take us anywhere between four and six hours to inspect the pipeline with Pipe Diver, and then it'll take uh, anywhere from three to six weeks to analyze the data and, and provide a final report. We do that all in-house. What they're going to get at, at the uh, end of the day for the money they've spent is a report that details each uh, stick of pipe from the bell to spigot joint, uh, what its condition is, whether it's uh, at a, in a high risk of failure or a low risk of failure or at no risk at all. As you can see from the, the scene behind me, there's a lot of work that goes involved to getting a pipeline ready to do this type of inspection. If we added on that dewatering the pipeline, so emptying it completely of water and having people go in and walk through, you're adding two or three more weeks to the whole process, where by here we're basically spending a day here and uh, inspecting the pipeline without dewatering and, and adding, that, you know, adding that expense. The actual day of the inspection, I would have to man each interconnect to uh, close it in advance of the pipe diver and then reopen it as it goes by to, so that the, uh, the arteries are back to working and, and giving uh, water to the community. So it is different because we're normally doing preventive maintenance, actual maintenance, where in this case we're inspecting to do the actual maintenance uh, once we uh, get the data back. Their biggest concern is knowing the condition of their pipeline. Uh, not particularly the work involved in, in getting that information, but really, you know, what do they have to do so that they can sleep comfortably at night? We can actually pinpoint and repair where we our distress is the most, and then we can come back in three years and review again and do it again. Overall, it's a lot cheaper because we're just fixing what's broken. We're not fixing what's not broken. We didn't have this technology 10 years ago, and nowadays we came and we're taking advantage of it. This is only the third time that the department has, uh, has began to use this system and it's working very well for us. It's obvious that utilities aging infrastructure and stricter regulations will require a higher level of investment in the years to come. Being proactive and repairing problems before they create disasters has shown to be a smart investment and use of funds. At Pure Technologies, we partner with utilities to reduce costs and help minimize the risk of failure and we will keep developing technologies to help water utilities look to the future.